TJ, and this is Native Res Media, your place for opinionated tech news, reviews, and entertainment. And today, I will be going out to the park with the Femi X8 SE 2020 edition to do a little uh, flight review, go over the app. Uh, I'm going to try to keep it simple. Uh, I won't go into too much detail uh, because this video would be in about an hour long. So I'm going to try to do as much as I can in a short amount of time. I will probably end up splitting this video up into a couple different parts. I'll go over the main features that I would use and that most people do use. And then I'll go over the other uh, slightly less used features in a separate video. Uh, I've been trying to do this for the past week, but it has been horrendously windy out here in Colorado Springs for the past uh week i'm talking about gusts up upwards of you know 20 30 miles per hour this thing can fly in winds uh up to 22 i think but um anything over that you know because this is class five i believe and i think that's 22 to something uh miles per hour wind but um you know, it was gusting pretty hard. I mean, blowing over fences and stuff like that. So I didn't want to take it out. I want to give this a fair shake. So I will see you guys out at the field. Uh, I'm going to head out there now. Peace. All right. Uh, I am outdoors right now. I have the Femi X8 SE 2020 edition on the takeoff pad. I am in a park. It's kind of clear here. Uh, we got a slight overcast. Sun is right above my head. West is that way, east is that way. Uh, I am ready to take off. I have checked through uh, on my phone. Uh, I'm gonna pull it up on here. Let me move this out of the way first. Move that, all right. So uh, you have a couple different apps. This is what I go with. You have the Before You Fly, the UAV Forecast app. Um, if you pull up the UAV Forecast app, it'll tell you a couple things basically it'll tell you where you're at it'll say if it's good to fly or not wind 13 miles per hour gusts up to 27 miles per hour this thing can handle those uh gusts uh the wind right now it's calm so i'm not worried about those gusts if when i get in an the air there'll probably be a little bit of gust but this uh drone can handle that uh, so i wouldn't worry too much about it uh and then it tells you other things like the precipitation probability visible satellites um visibility 10 miles things like that so we are good when it comes to that so i can swipe out of that one and then we got the before you fly app this is uh something that the faa recommends uh, whenever you register your drone on the uh, uh website uh it'll tell you you know download this because it'll tell you if you are in a no fly zone where you can and cannot fly you can see where the airport is on the map there you can see where the other airport is and so as long as i uh <laughs> thread this little uh tunnel here i'm fly fine with flying in these areas this drone again as i stated in the unboxing it will stop and not uh basically fly into a no fly area no fly zone automatically with the built-in gps so we can get out of there let me pull back up the uh femi nav app and by the way i am using the uh dji osmo action camera here i'm going to do a review on it um, I actually have another action camera that I, I, I use from time to time as well, and I'm going to compare the two. But anyways, Femi app is open. I'm going to walk you guys through it before I take it off. Uh, you have uh, up in the upper left-hand corner there, you have your uh, height, and this is from the takeoff. So right now, I'm in Colorado Springs. We're about 6,000 feet of uh, elevation. That is uh, ASL above sea level, uh, ASL. Uh, so whenever you that high it doesn't tell you okay you're six thousand feet above sea level it just tells you uh your height above wherever you took off from so keep that in mind when whenever you are uh, plotting any kind of waypoint missions or you are flying uh, then the next one over is uh the distance away from you so that's where it says zero feet uh the uh, horizontal arrow then if you go over to the uh, right of that you'll see the vertical speed it's just vs and then the horizontal speed vertical speed is how fast it's going up or down horizontal speed is how fast it is moving away uh away from you or towards you uh then you have your gps uh it's saying it's ready to go i got 17 satellites you can see that right to the uh right of the gps there then you have your uh camera fpv feed signal there and then next to that you have your remote signal uh, that's the connection for from the remote to the drone itself if uh, that fades and it just basically goes into a lockout mode the uh, drone will automatically return to home 
Then you have your battery percentage next to that. It is at 97%. Uh, made sure to top them off before I came out here. Normally, if you have them sitting and they're just uh, stored, you don't want to uh, have them fully charged. You know, they'll over time kind of trickle down and drain, but uh, that's just something good to know when it comes to these types of batteries. Then you have your settings here up at the top. It'll uh, You can go into there, you can go into the drone, limit of flight, flight speed, flight height. You can set all those things, which I've already done. Flight height, 393 feet. You wanna fly below 400 feet uh, due to the uh, FAA rules and regulations on drone flying, unless you have special uh, permission. Uh, uh, height of return to fly, I got it at 100 feet. I think around me and where I'm at, for the most part, uh, 100 feet should suffice. And matter of fact, let me go up a little bit. I'm gonna take it up. To about 150 feet because I am in an area where if I fly a little bit more west it does go up in elevation so that's something you got to keep in mind as well then you got you can put it in beginner flight mode sport flight mode uh, fail safe I have it on return to home you can have it on hover or land then you have precise precise landing so what precise landing is is when it comes over the top if I'm up there at 150 feet it'll start to come down and as soon as it detects that uh, orange helipad I think it's a blue one on the other side it can be orange or blue I believe it'll as soon as it detects it it will lock in and it will uh, try to land on that uh, pad as long as it's no big gust of wind uh, usually it's uh, it's pretty good about doing that then you have um, update dynamic home point and smart track so if you move to a different location if I'm walking around and I got it following me the home point could uh, follow me as well where it's going to return to home to uh, then you have and I just have it off since I'm not moving I'm not on hike I'm not going anywhere right now and that's the same thing if you if you have it following you if you're in a vehicle uh, you know if you're doing some off-roading or whatever and you get to the top of a hill and you want it to return to home it can return to home where you're at then you have your gain expo tuning things like that that is uh, the gimbals and sticks and things like that kind of tuning again that is all um, you know something you can learn over time it takes a little bit of uh, time to uh, learn how to uh, tune some of that stuff to your liking whenever you get to flying you gotta you gotta fly it a little bit to learn um, what you uh, I guess what you get used to when using the gimbals here then um, you come down to your uh, five directional customization on the five directional button that is this button here on the stick and um, what that does is, you know, it's, that, it's a quick button. So I can go push down, the gimbal will point down, push it again, the gimbal will point up, push up and the map will come up, things like that. Uh, you can uh, set that customization in here. Uh, you got your gimbal calibration, pitch speed, all that. Temperature, the battery, it tells you, uh, this is what my cells are charged at. This is how many cycles they've been through on that battery. I have two batteries, um, you know, things like that. And it'll tell you, you know, return to home, Low battery warning, I got it set at 30% and that's when it's gonna tell me, hey, you should, you know, getting ready to plot your way back home from there. Cause if I'm flying and I'm two miles out, two miles away from me, cause this will fly up to 4.9 miles away from me. Uh, I, th I want, you know, at least a decent amount of battery to get me back. And I think 30% should, uh, should suffice. Uh, then if you go uh, all down a little bit, you have your camera, and that's from the uh, settings menu. You have your camera settings. You can uh, come in and tune your camera, and that's what I'm gonna do now before I take off. Uh, if, uh, if it let me, there we go. Uh, video mode, 4K 24 frames per second, because I record on a 24P timeline 90% of the time, and so I don't wanna record, record at 30 frames per second because when I import it, I'm gonna have to take extra steps to get it to be smooth. Um, if I record it on a 30 frames per second timeline, I would want to set it to that. Uh, 60, it's a little bit more lenient since you have that extra, uh, those extra frames. You can basically uh, interpret it down to that 24p and it, it'll still be somewhat smooth. But at uh, uh, 30 and 24, those timelines don't really mix that much. All right. And so now we're going to go down to uh, the video quality. I'm going to set that at, uh, let's see here. Let me see if I can touch. I got my cold fingers here. All right, there we go. We're gonna set it at high, push back. Am I pushing the right button? There we go. And then we got white balance, sunny. Yeah, I keep white balance at sunny. Color, general, nope, I do not keep color at general. I turn that to F-log. 
uh, and in the uh, you can see when it when I changed it that it basically made it a flat color profile I also have that set on my DJI I, uh, in post production that's when I color correct most of the time uh, video encoder you can go H.265 or H.264 it just depends on whichever one your um, uh, you are your uh, I guess post-production software your uh, recording software that you your editing software you use and what you want to uh, uh, use for the encoder there and then you got your medium mode center so everything in the center that's what I want in focus and that's it uh, then you can come over to your grid lines I have those turned on so I can see if my horizon and everything is level uh, and we can go from there so same thing with the camera uh, Basically, if I switched it over to uh, camera mode, which I'm in uh, recording mode, video mode, I can switch it over to camera mode and uh, change those photo modes and things like that. JP, I actually have it. If I take a picture, I'm going to take it uh, a JPEG plus a DNG file. So the JPEG is just a simple, small little file. If I switch it over to, D you know, if I'm taking a DNG file, it's going to be something that I can open up in Photoshop and it's going to be highly detailed. I can color correct that to my heart's content. It is going to be flat color profile, uh, what, where I have it set. And you have a lot more uh, freedom to uh, edit it in post-production. So it's good um, for that. Uh, then you have your... Um, you know, white balance on photo, medium, meter, meeting, <laughs> metering mode, and color mode. Uh, same kind of stuff. So let me switch this back over to the video quality there. Boop, and I'm just checking it over, making sure everything is where I want it. Good. So I can click out of there. Then you go down. You got your uh, start, stop recording button. Come on down. You can you know view your uh, footage. And then you have your uh, intelligent flight modes. That's the little drone looking guy or the alien looking thing. You got your waypoint. You got your droney. You got your smart track, tap to fly, orbit, spiral, and then you can come down to cinematic mode. This is the flight mode, uh, cinematic mode, tripod, course lock, and fixed wing. So basically, what I'm going to try to go through today, if I have the time, because this I've already been talking for a long time already. Um, uh, basically, I will go over, um, let's see, I'll try to do a droney, uh, the rocket droney or something, uh, I think I've already done a couple. I, can, I might put in some B-roll for what that is. Then you have your smart track. That is where you can draw a box around you and it will follow you. There's different types of, a couple different types of smart tracks that I use. Then you have tap fly. If you have your drone in one location, you could tap on the map and it'll go to a sep separate location. And then orbit, uh, which I have some B-roll footage of some orbit and I'll put that in as well. Um, but uh, that's fairly simple. And then you have your, if you come down to flight mode, tripod mode is a mode that you know I like using. So you can get it down low at a certain level or wherever you are. And if you push the stick full forward, it will only go like one meters per second if that it'll go real slow so if someone is walking in front of the camera you can actually have it in tripod mode and the drone will kind of just follow right behind them smoothly uh, without going too fast and becoming unstable and then you have your fixed wing mode that is where the gimbal itself will kind of smoothly follow the course of the uh, drone when you, whenever you are flying and, and you know that takes a little bit of skill because that's where you really got to know how to fly a drone if you're flying it in fixed wing mode and you want to get some good cinematic footage it's, it's more like uh, uh, some of those um, drone FPV footage just that, that mr what is it steely steel yeah it does but uh you're not doing all that you're not flying through vacant buildings with this uh through little holes it's, it's not gonna happen if somebody does it let me know but uh that's that uh and then you got your search and rescue mode down there at the bottom if you look at that that's where the drone can actually uh zoom uh the uh, camera uh can zoom you can zoom up to i forgot what it was but uh whenever i go over that in the next video i will show you what that is and it's pretty it's pretty cool uh, if you go over to some woods, there's some wooded areas around here. And if you're looking for little Timmy that's stuck in a well somewhere, you can uh, zoom in on him and like, oh, there he is. And, uh, and it might be a mile away and you can, you know, radio into whoever is searching for him. But then we're going to come on down. And so first I'm going to start off by going to the bottom left of the screen map if i click on the map it pulls up the map pulls up where i'm at it pulls up the drone which direction it is facing so it shows home things like that and it shows you know uh basically the the direction so you'll see when i get the drone in the air when it flies away right now the drone is pointing 
uh, towards the west. So once it takes off and flies off, uh, if I get lost, I can't see it. I can use that arrow to get back to me because my station, my position will always be where I am at. So that's that. So I click back on the FPV footage, it comes up. I can also use this to toggle it, my quick uh, toggle to do it. Uh, then you come over to the uh, right of that and you have your gimbal. I can tilt that gimbal up and down. You can see the gimbal uh, degrees of pitch. Right now it is up at 3.3. I can go down to a negative. 16 degrees, 19 degrees, and that's that. A little bit cold out here, huh? And then, all right, we have our exposure value. It is at negative three, 1.3 right now. Uh, when I get it in the air, start looking around, that's when I can uh, set my exposure um, to see where I need to be as far as uh, how bright or how dark the uh, lens needs to be if the sun's shining too bright uh, when I turn towards it or away from it. Then you have uh, my ISO level, my ISO level, which is set to auto. My uh, shutter is set to auto. I am color mode, F log, things like that. If I had ND filters, I can go in there and change my ISO and my shutter mode to something uh, more suitable where it's supposed to be. I ordered some ND filters uh, from uh, Ali, AliExpress, but uh, they got returned to sender on the night because for some reason AliExpress, I'm in El Paso County, uh, Colorado Springs. They sent them to El Paso, uh, Texas. Yes, it happened. And so now I have to reorder them and wait another couple weeks to get those from China. Uh, I can't order them from over here in the United States, but those same indie filters for six of them, I think it was like $80 and they were like $30 order from AliExpress. It's a no brainer. I can wait two weeks. But uh, then we come over to the SD card, it tells you, so I got a 64 uh, gig SD card in here, it tells me uh, as it is trickling down how much storage space I have less left. At 4K, 24 frames per second, it'll eat away at that. Uh, usually if you fly 30 minutes, you're gonna use about, I don't know, 15 gigs probably. Uh, you can use up to it, it just all depends. Uh, but uh, that's it on the app itself. Uh, another thing I wanted to touch on, if you touch on the GPS ready to go up at the top there, it'll pull your drone status. This is what you want to check on, out every time before you fly. Uh, GPS normal, compass normal, magnetic environment weak. You want it to be weak. You don't want to be flying around a lot of magnets. The IMU normal uh, and your battery normal, gimbal normal. Everything is good to go. So I am ready to take off. In order to take off, uh, let's see. First, I'm just going to take off. I'm going to do... Uh, I'm going to go up, fly out. You can take a look at the scenery around, but, uh, and then I'm going to come back and do a couple of intelligent flight modes from there. So I press and hold the takeoff button here, three seconds. It'll automatically take off. It'll go up to a preset height that I have for the auto takeout mode, which is about 13 feet. If I look down here, it's at 14.2 and it's going down to the 13 feet on the controller there. I don't know if you can see that, but it is uh, at the preset height and it just kind of stabilized around there. Uh, you can see the wind is gusting a little bit. I don't know if the mic's picking it up or not, but uh, it's a nice little gust, but the drone will try to stay in that same area. Oh, there's some birds flying over there. I'm gonna try to avoid them. But uh, yeah, so first I am going to go ahead and let's get this gimbal tilted up here. Tilt the gimbal up. You can see that uh, across there, that street is on a slope. And uh, let's go up. So if you're looking at the app here. Going up, let's see. Oh man, those birds flew right over my head. This is not going to be fun. All right, so I'm at about, I'm going to go up to about 150 or so feet. That's not fun. You know what? I know you guys see him. Let me get out of this area here. So I'm going to just go because <laughs> I don't like their flight pattern. My exposure values, everything seems to be set cool for me right now. Everything looks to be about right, negative 
All right, so I'm going to stop there. I'm going to go up a little bit more. Let's get up to about 200. You see them birds again. Now, if I go out about a half mile and those birds pop up again, that's going to suck because <laughs> they're probably trying to attack. All right, so as you see, I am out. And if you look up at the top left there, you can see I am about 14, 1500 feet away from me. And you can see uh, the FPV feed. You can see, up. Oh, it just went into fail safe return. So now you can see this is what happened. So if my controller is losing any kind of connection, it'll go into this fail safe return. And I got it on returning to home right now. It all it, you can see that it, it's coming in. And it's a good, good way for you to see what happened. So right now I am in. I'm gonna say a somewhat heavily populated area. This is not some kind of um, open, just uncongested area. I was able to fly out that way the, the other day, but uh, hey, you know it happened. So I'm gonna just come back here, uh, get it over my head, and then do some intelligent flight modes. I'll put some, again, some B-roll footage of me flying in uh, different areas, and you can see how it flies. I was able to fly this thing out a mile away from me with no problem. So the good thing is it will do that. It is in fail-safe return. Turn. And so fail-safe return completed. You saw it pop up on the controller there. I can see the controller hovering above me at uh, the 200 or so feet. So I'm going to bring this thing down and show you all what it will do if I um, pull it in and then let it auto land. So I'm just sitting there. The pad is right here in front of my face. All right, so that's where the pad is and the drone is up there. I'm going to press auto land. Press and hold it three times. Landing pad not detected is coming up on there. It's going to try to come down it may it, it, it won't detect the landing pad from where I'm at so if I stop it and I bring it over let's just say if I bring it over that camera on the bottom oh guess what it just picked up the landing pad so I brought it over to where the camera is landing pad detected it's still in auto land it's still going to come down all I, so as it is landing you can control this move it around and it will uh, be able to um, detect the landing pad. So I'm not touching anything on the controller. I'm gonna... And you can see it kind of just hit the pad, bounced a little bit and stopped, stopped recording, things like that. And so, believe it or not, I don't even think I started recording when I took off. So we're going to take back off here and then I will start. I got my lav mic here, so we're going to do it from right there. So it is up in the sky. Okay, so the drone is back up in the sky. I am going to do some intelligent flight modes. I'm going to record all of this now. All right, so I am recording. And again, you can press one of the A or B buttons. One is to take pictures, one is to record. Uh, I'm gonna go up. Fly over a little bit. And then I'm gonna turn around. So the drone is facing me. Point the gimbal down. All right, so and to do intelligent flight modes, right now I'm going to do trace. I'm looking at the battery percentage, it's at 77%, so I'm good. So I'm going to go into intelligent flight mode. I'm going to do smart track. I'm going to click on that. I'm going to do smart track trace, which that, please drag a circle around it. I drag, boom, hey, it's got me. So it says go. It's ready to go. So right now, if I move, it's going to record, it's going to track me. I'm going to unplug my mic 
from the camera so that I won't yank it and drag that little cord around. So from where I am at, I'm going to switch to the, uh, the DJI for audio. So if it sounds horrible, that's why. <laughs> but uh, yeah, and you can see it is uh, tracking me and tracing me as I walk away. And if I go back the other way, it is going to trace me. This is good if you're riding a bike, if you're on a mountain somewhere, if you're in a SUV, you're off-roading, it will follow you around this way. I also have it set, because you have to go into the app in order to change this. I have it set to where if, um, basically if I walk towards it, it will go backwards. So you have to set that in the app itself and you see it is going backwards if you don't set that in the app it will not go backwards you will walk towards it the gimbal will point down until uh you get up under it and then it will kind of freak out a little bit but you see it is still following me and tracing me and that's it so that's trace we're gonna stop that real quick boom all right so next one is going to be Let's go in here. We'll do a quick droney real quick. It's, uh, we'll do, uh, you know, there's inversion where it kind of just flies up and away from you. There's rocket where it'll fly over your head. Rocket, you know, it comes over your head, hovers there for a second, flies straight up. I have B-roll of that. Uh, the droney in, uh, invert, I don't believe I've ever done one of those, so let's give it a shot here. Uh, so, so I drag a rectangle around the target. And then, as you see, it has caught me, bam. And then I press Droney there. Let me see if it's got me, hold on. Oh, there we go, I gotta hit the arrow there. So flight speed, let's go 8.7. Flight distance, about 133 feet. Auto return on, so go. So from where it's at, if you look at it, it will uh, take a couple seconds, then it's gonna do a droney. So it's gonna fly up and away from me. I could have brought it closer if I wanted to, but whatever. So it's gonna go to those preset uh, distances that I had. It's gonna try to maintain its lock on me. Once it gets 200 or so feet away, it will uh, then stop, which it did. Uh, and then it's gonna, I had it set to auto return. It's gonna come back to me. Yep, all right. So let me get ready to plug my mic back in here so you guys can hear me again. Bam, all right. So it beeped, that means it is done and it came right back to where it was supposed to be. So next intelligent mode uh, is um, orbit. Well, oh, wait, 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 we, I could have did smart, the other smart track uh, as well uh, that I didn't do, which is profile, which I put in some B-roll for that because I do have some B-roll footage. It's the same as the other smart track, except it will only go side to side. It will not rotate at all. So if it is following along with you and it is on the side of you, that is where it will stay and it will just kind of just basically walk go along with you as if somebody is walking with a gimbal and that's basically what that smart track profile is uh let's see here then we come to orbit i'll show over it over here so orbit uh basically you want to fly to the center of where you want it to orbit so i'm gonna come on over this way i flew up a little bit and then i'm gonna drop the gimbal down when i get to right above me. So bam. Is your gimbal dropping? Let's drop it. There we go. So you can see where I'm at. Drone should be right above me. Hey, there it is, right above me. Sun's right above me too. All right, so drone's looking right down on me. So what I'm going to do, and then I have, uh, and then basically I'm top, I'm gonna to set the center. You hit that, it sets the center. Now I wanna hit, uh, set uh, the radius. So I just fly back. And 
And let's pull the gimbal up a little bit. So radius, 111 feet. Look around you, make sure nothing is at that height and distance around you before you hit um, go. So I hit set radius, flight speed. Uh, I can change that again. So I can go up to 11 or whatever. So let's just keep it where it's, you know, around eight and uh, 8.9. Now uh, you have direction counterclockwise and clockwise. Uh, so I want it to be, you know, clockwise is fine. And then I want center. So free, the camera will just go free. It'll, it'll still rotate around you, but the it won't it won't be locked on you or anything. The camera will just capture whatever uh, is in its um, uh, I guess whichever is in its eye wherever whenever you are going in circles. If I have it on center, it's just going to stay on the center, which is where I, I set it on me. So I hit go, and then uh, you can also speed it up and slow it down. Uh, but basically, it is going to start its orbit. It's uh, probably calculating it, and there it goes. So now it is going to orbit me at that height that I have it set at, which is about 45, 46 feet. It'll stay at that height, and it's going to go about 100 feet away. And if you look, it is out there and up there. And again, you just want to make sure there are no power lines, no other trees, things that are going to come in the way. And if you look at the, the, the drone, it's tilting as it's rotating, but the gimbal uh, should be, you know, kind of staying somewhat vertical as it goes around me or horizontal, so as you see. And it'll keep going until I hit stop. It will just keep on going. Let me not tangle myself up in this core here. And that is it. So I will stop the orbit. Bam. And guess what? There it goes. And so that's that's basically orbit. And right now, let's look at the flight time here. We are at about 18 minutes, 31 seconds of flight time. All right. So now we are going to um, fly out and away. Tilt the gimbal up. Uh, I am at about 120. Let me go up a little bit more. I'm going to take it up to a decent flight height. I'm going to set my exposure. Uh, and that is the uh, right knob. And you can see the exposure going. Oh, let's record that. Now you should be able to see the exposure changing. All right, cool. Let's turn. You can see the clouds kind of got Pike Peak. Pike's Peak, um, the mountain over there, they're all over it. So I'm gonna fly out that way. I'm just gonna Fly straight, tilt the gimbal up a little bit. And at my height, based on my lines and everything and where I'm going, if I were to keep flying straight in the direction that I'm going, I don't know, probably we would hit a house. That's why it's good to have FPV. So that's another reason why if it does cut off, you want to just automatically return to home and have your return to home height set at a decent height. Because right now, if I was to be over the other side of this hill, my return to home site height is set at 150. I'm going to run into a tree or something. So from where I'm at, let me go up a little bit. And I, you know, even flying a little bit of time that I have that I just, you know, was flying. I'm already 2,000 feet away from me. Flying at uh, 22 miles per hour, that's the maximum speed that I have set. And if you look at my uh, controller signal, everything, it's still uh, pretty good right now. So from here, I can stop if I want. Uh, I am recording, I think. Let me see if it'll take a picture while it's recording. I don't think it's gonna take a picture while it's recording. I'm gonna stop recording on the screen on the uh, controller real quick hit the uh and you can hear a beep if i hit the left take a picture 
photo taken succeeded and then bam start recording again now i'm recording again simple as that i'm gonna turn it around and you can see the park well is that the park i'm at no that's not the park i've turned a little too far that's a different park i think let's go back let's see if we can see me Maybe that was the park I'm at. Hold on, let's see. That's why I say it's good. Pull up the map. Zoom out. You can see where the drone is and what it's looking at. And it is not facing me. Let's turn it a little bit. You can see I'm turning it around. That is me up at the top left or right. And that's the drone at the bottom. So if I turn a little bit more, hey, there's the park I'm at way back over there. So, uh, yeah, I will then fly full speed towards that area. So, for instance, if I'm just flying this direction and if I want to get some cinematic fo footage of the drone flying straight and sweeping the gimbal down, I can do that. If I'm looking, wanting to get right over the top of a house or something, oh, look at that. Bam, I can stop it. They need to fix that street. But then I can come back up, sweep it back up to open up a scene. If I'm doing some kind of movie and I want to set the uh, picture of the scene, bam. Now, you know, the scene is, it's a park scene. The killer is in the park. <laughs> but then, yeah, you can uh, do your color correction and everything like that to set the mood. But anyways, Enough talk for me. Let me get this thing back over here and land it. I'm at 34%. It's going to be howling at me here in a second. I can kind of hear it above my head. So what I'm going to do, auto return to home, push that over because I'm lazy and I don't want to do it myself. You just slide it over. You leave it there. And it's automatically saying returning to home. It's going to lock in on whatever it has to lock in on. It's going to automatically land. On it. Well, it should. Let me see. Because if I keep it on return to home, it should auto land. I think I had it on auto land, if I'm not mistaken. Or maybe it won't. We'll see. So, yeah, there we go. So you see it says landing pad not detected. Obviously, it's not going to detect it because it's up 200 feet in the air. Once it gets closer, it'll automatically detect it. Um, again, based on that camera that is under the bottom, and it's going to land. Right on the money. I'm gonna put my glasses back on. And that's it. Stop recording. And that's pretty much it for today. Uh, video was cutting off and on every once in a while, but uh, like I said, the next uh, recording, I will um, get some uh, waypoints and do some of that kind of flying. So with that being said, peace out. I'm going to go back home, go inside, and edit this. You guys, take it easy. Okay, and I'm back. I uh, hope you guys enjoyed that uh, little review there. Uh, I put in a little bit of flight footage and B-roll and things like that. Hope you enjoy that. Thank you guys for tuning in to this video. You guys have a wonderful day. If you have any questions, feel free to comment down below. If you want me to review or go over anything else on this drone, feel free to ask, comment down below. Hit me uh, up in my inbox. Uh, I should uh, have that linked below as well. Again, thank you all. Peace.